Hi guys, my name's Serafina and welcome to my brand new channel, Fina Makes. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to copy your favourite t-shirt. The method that I use involves no unpicking, so if it's a t-shirt that you still love to wear, I'll show you how to copy it so you can have that one plus a bunch of others in different fabrics. The t-shirt I'm going to be using today is this one. It's a nice simple shape because I thought that if I do a big boxy shape, um, people with different kinds of t-shirts will be able to follow along and still get the gist of what I'm doing. So if you've got longer sleeves or a shorter body or a slightly different neckline shape, I'll talk you through that when I'm going through the variations on how to do this. Let's get started. In order to copy your t-shirt, the first thing you're going to want to do is turn it inside out because we want to see the seam lines so that we know we're copying it properly and keeping the same shape. And then what we need to do is fold the garment in half. So we'll start with the shoulder seam. So I normally start at the side neck, but you can start at the shoulder point. It's fine, whatever. And then you're going to need your pins for this bit too. And then we're going to put a horizontal pin across the seam just at that point. Then shoulder seam's pretty short. What you're doing is I'm running my finger along the seam underneath and my thumb over the seam at the top to find the shoulder point on both. And then we're going to pin that too. And then mid seam, just for luck, we'll put another pin in. So our shoulder seam is nice and stable, like we've pinned them together. We're going to be tracing three pieces. We've got the back piece, the front piece, and the sleeve. So we're going to trace off those three pieces. Doesn't matter, I start with the body and I do the sleeve afterwards. It doesn't matter front or back, just pick a side. Because um, the beginning processes are the same for both. So underarm points, that little junction there between the uh, sleeve seam and the underarm seam. We are going to pin that together too. And then repeat along the side seam what you did on the shoulder. Pop the last pin in, so you've got your two halves uh, pinned together. Now, when I lift this up, you're going to be able to see that there is some serious roping going along uh, this centre front seam. Is that centre front? No, centre back, whatever. Um, but the same thing is happening on my front. So if that happens to you, don't freak out. It's all good. We need to get a little bit creative with folding our t-shirt in half. I'm going to pin my armholes together so I'm running my finger underneath here matching matching the two seams so that I know the top of my t-shirt is all matched and together. So I've now got, just get it a little bit straighter, I've now got shoulder seam armhole and side seam pinned together. So if you've pinned your top, your t-shirt or whatever, um, and you've got a nice flat straight line here, you can skip to section two. I'm gonna show you what to do if this has happened and you're all like, oh my God, how am I ever gonna trace this? Um, Cause it does look a bit scary, but there is a way out of this. So the issue here is that over time you've worn it um, it's been washed, it's been spun around in the washing machine, the, the fibres have all kind of warped around the body, so this doesn't fold in half anymore. Um, so the way that we rectify this is we take the pins out of the side seam, leave the underarm pin in, take them out, so you've now got the armhole pinned, the shoulder seam pinned, you can pin the neck as well, for good luck. This is quite a small neck, so I didn't bother. Um, if you've got a wider neckline, like a bigger circumference, then definitely pin it. Uh, right, and so from the underarm, I'm gonna put my hands underneath the T-shirt, 
so it sits nice and flat. So you kind of pull the layers apart like this so that it folds nice and flat. Lay it down and just check. So you see that's so much happier now. This is what it will look like if you've folded it and it hasn't warped. One side seam is here, one side seam is here. So when we trace this off, what we're gonna do is trace the in-between line. So we'll pick the in-between point, pick the middle point, pick the middle point, pick the middle point so that we get a true shape. You can flip the t-shirt over and pin through the very base of the overlocking because that will give you an absolutely accurate uh, location for the other side seam. Then when you flip it over, you've got a super clear pin line where the other seam is. Okay, cool. So we're ready for step two. You want to get your pattern paper. Uh, you want your ruler. I've got Pattern Master here. They're amazing. And what you want to do is draw a nice straight line. I'm using a pen so that you can see what I'm doing. But you can use a pencil. You want to make sure that your paper is big enough to trace half the t-shirt because we're going to do it in two halves. Um, and then what you're going to do is match up your lovely folded centre line to the pen line that you've just drawn. Because we've got a curved armhole and a neckline and all of this is stitched in a circle, this bit's kind of off limits right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to trace uh, from the underarm point down to the hem and then we're going to travel up and do the top half. So I'm just manipulating the fabric to get it as flat as possible from the underarm point down. So I'm going to pop a pin in there and then gently nudge the jersey towards um, the fold. You don't want to stretch the fabric because if you do that you won't get the right shape. So be nice and gentle and just kind of position it. So pop a little pin in there. Right, so the underarm part, I like to place a hand on here, um, that's quite firm, so that I can keep that fabric steady whilst I'm stretching this fabric out. And what you're aiming for is for it all to look flat. This doesn't, that's fine, that's in sleeve country, that's cool. So we pop a pin in the underarm kind of area. So you'll notice when I'm pinning, I'm not lifting the paper. If I put my hand underneath and lift the paper up to pin the t-shirt, I'm going to move the fabric. So um, when you're pinning, you want to pin at kind of a very shallow angle and then quite quickly use the finger on your other hand to scoop the pin through. I've been doing this for a really, really, really long time. Um, so I have a knack of making it look easy. If you struggle with it to begin with, that's totally natural. I'm going to put just a couple more pins and then we're going to start tracing. First bit of tracing, super, super easy. You want to go around the hemline of your t-shirt. You'll notice that I'm doing short, sharp, short, sharp lines instead of one long continuous line because it's much easier to be accurate that way. Here I've got a discrepancy, so I'm going to go in the middle of the two of them. It becomes really, really clear generally when you take your garment off which bits are wrong and which bits you need to change. So now what we're going to do is tracing wheel um, these side seams. So when you're tracing, I use one of these. They're super lethal, particularly if you grab them out of the pot like that uh, because they're really sharp. Uh, when you're using them, they have a bit of wiggle that's normal and needed to use them properly. So instead of doing it on like that, like kind of like head on to the paper, Cock it to one side and suddenly it doesn't wiggle around anymore. So that's quite a good tip for a tracing wheel. I trace like I draw. So instead of going like this, the fabric will kind of move. I like to do short, sharp, 
And then when you get to the underarm, you're just going to do a nice deep uh, wheel there. Same thing here. And then stop when we get to the underarm point. Now we're going to start to trace this top section. So in order to do that, if I pull here, you'll see that the, this fabric is all coming with it. So what you need to do is start taking out some of the pins along here so that you can trace your trace your t-shirt. I've got a bit of twisting going on here, which is not ideal, but it's all good. So I'm gently, I'm gonna take that one out and try and gently reposition it so that's all happier. That's happier there. So it's kind of, you just gotta manipulate the fabric basically. And we want to end up getting to that midway point. So it helps to tuck the sleeve inside. And we're just gonna, this t-shirt is a challenge. I'm gonna ignore that roping because otherwise it's gonna send me nuts. I'm gonna take that pin out. So the armholes are going to shift slightly, that's fine, we'll go in the middle of the two of them to preserve our sanity. Right, so I've taken those two armhole pins out and I'm going to release this because that's pulling this bit. Cool, that's much flatter. Got a bit of rope here, I don't care. If you don't tell anyone, neither will I. I'm going to trace all the way around to here because this bit and this bit, you can't trace at the same time because they're sewn in a circle. So from here, I'm gonna trace. And now the bit where I took my pins out, I'm feeling where there's one seam here, one seam here. I'm just gonna go in the middle of them so that I get the happy medium, you know? And then taking that pin out and popping, that's already there, that's fine. I'll take that pin out too. So I've got much more freedom. Take the hem pin out couple of these centre front pins because we don't need those anymore and now for the fun little top part right so this is all sitting nice and flat that's good that's all sitting nice and flat my neckline's a bit wonky you will find this on older t-shirts so I'm actually happy that uh, this is the case because I can show you worst case scenario this t-shirt is being particularly fun. So we had a slight technical hitch uh, and the camera died. Thank you camera. So I have uh, charged the battery so hopefully I'll be able to finish the video. Note to self, get another battery so that you don't run out and have to charge it for an hour. So if the light looks a little bit different that is why. Okay so where were we? We've pinned the centre front, we've pinned this side of the neckline Right, so now we need to pull this corner out. So I don't want to change my corner points of the shoulder. I want to keep those pinned together. But if I stretch that out, that's all. It's flat enough for me to copy, basically. Like when we come to, we're going to have to true all of this afterwards um, and make the lines bolder and join them all up and it's called proving the pattern pieces together. I'll show you how to do that. We're going to have to do that anyway. So if it's like, you know, if it's not 100% perfect, it's all good. Um, right. So the last little bit, this bit, this bit, get a really good cross point at your shoulder. That's super important. Um, and then my shoulders. And then the last bit you can draw in with a pen. So you can see here, they follow a different line. So what I'm gonna do is just try not to draw on my t-shirt. You would obviously use pencil, as I said earlier. I am not, so that you can see what I'm doing. So I'm gonna go in between those two, like that bit, that bit, that bit. So I've done the back, yay. Now you repeat all of that for the front. So I'm going to take these pins out, pop 
pop this to one side. We'll come back to it in a minute. We're going to take the pins out of the back armhole and pin the front armhole. Okay, cool, right, pin that together. So repeat the same thing. Nice and flat, okay, cool, so that's behaving. And repeat. Uh, I'm gonna time lapse this bit because you've seen me do it. So same thing again, lay it nice and flat. That all feels good. So we're gonna start with the easy bit and then we're gonna work our way up into the neckline. So again, I'm gonna time lapse this because you've seen me do it. So I'm starting with the underarm and then I'm going to trace again the pinned line here and the overlock line down here. Cool. So we've traced all of those. I'm going to release some of these pins at the bottom. Okay, cool. And then bring it to the top part. So I am expecting to have the same issue that we have with the other side. So again, poke the sleeve through not as bad it's still a bit misbehavey but that's okay right so I've managed to get that to agree that's it now you're agreeing my two front necks are different but that's fine because we're going to decide what we want to happen with the neckline anyway so that's absolutely minor if you end up with the two necks sort of like not lining up like my underneath one's quite far back it's all good my side neck point is the same so I can just decide what I want to happen with my uh, actual neck shape. Take that bottom pin out. This actually is all sitting nice and flat, so I'm gonna take that win and pin it, if it will let me. Uh, right, so I've traced to the underarm point. So I'm gonna get in there. It's easier just to, if it's pinned to the paper, it's easier to turn the paper rather than turn yourself. Get a good little tracing wheel in there. The two armholes are still together around here, so that's cool. That's all flat. Right, so I can release it now. And this is the pin. We're gonna trace up from here to do the top part. I'm gonna release all other pins might put a pin in here to make it behave. And then pull all of this. You wanna bring that round so that you've got access to this top part. So actually, I've allowed the neckline to be um, wonky, but the side neck still matches. So it matches at this point here, side neck. The rest of it doesn't want to hang out, that's fine, whatever. But by allowing that to happen, the rest of it sits nice and flat. So you just have to kind of play around. It's always the simply, it's always the simple tasks, the things that seem simply done that uh, give you the most hassle. Right. Finish off tracing your armhole. Make sure you get a really good cross here because this is super important. I try and get all my apexes or apices, whatever you say, um, shoulder point, side neck point, um, underarm point, because they are your anchor points. Because if we end up with something random, we might have to measure the pattern we've created and then measure the garment. So tracing that, but I'm going to tracing wheel. Actually, no, I'm not. I'm going to flip that back and trace that. See, it's really misbehaving, but that's okay. 
that's the other one and then that goes to there super weird anyway we'll get there right so then take pins out and then that's the piece traced off i'm gonna write an f on here cf means center front so that i don't get confused pop that to one side then we go back to the t-shirt now what we want to do is take all the pins out cool and then we're going to choose a sleeve doesn't matter which one i'm going to go for this one so to do the sleeve what you do is you fold the sleeve in half at the underarm point so you fold it in half so the edges match and the seam line matches and it's flat and the direct underarm seam like point that should match too so we put some anchor pins in here and then what we want to do is lay it flat so you can see the sleeve is behaving a lot better because it's a smaller bit of fabric the armholes on the front and the back of a garment are not the same Sometimes in mass production, they make them the same for speed and so that the sleeves can't get confused. But because of the curvature of the body, uh, the back sleeve is generally flatter, straighter than the front. So what we need to make sure is when we trace this, we mark which side is the front and which side is the back. So this is the back. I know because there's this binding here. That's the back sleeve. Um, so we're going to pin... Let it sit flat. Always start with the underarm seam, push it outwards, let it sit flat so it's in half and you don't have any weird puckers going on. And then pop a couple of pins in the sleeve. This time, we are going to draw a line down the centre of the paper. We're going to place the sleeve with the fold along that line, pin it, and then one for luck here, tracing wheel the back, and I don't know if you can see that, tracing wheel a line matching the shoulder point because the shoulder point isn't always at the center of the sleeve in fact it generally isn't so i'm going to trace the overlocking at the base of the back and then the rest of it and i always do a pen line top and bottom then we flip the sleeve oops, to do the other side. Take your pins out and that's your sleeve traced. Okay. So now we are going to go around and trace in our shapes. I start with the straight lines that I know are accurate, so I'm going to draw in my shoulder line. Going past the edges, that's totally fine. You'll have little dots, you can't really see them on here, um, but you can go around and fill in across the dots you've made with your pattern master. I do this freehand because I've only traced the little bits, um, almost like dash lines, all the way to the top. So I just go around and do a quick little pencil line where they are. Repeat that for all of your pieces. That's my shoulder point. 
Okay, so I've traced all my pieces off and I've roughly outlined them. I start with my front, because why not? Um, so the first thing I'm going to do, and I'm going to do this in a different colour, is trace in my neckline. So my side neck point is perfect. So I need to get from here to here. So I'm going to draw myself a curve. Actually, I don't like the way that's curving round. So I'm going to go somewhere in the middle and draw that line in. It's easier to draw a curve if you anchor your hand on the table and then use your wrist as a pivot point. For bigger curves, use your elbow, like you've got your own personal portable compass um, on your body, so it's really handy to use it. So that's my neckline. Right, for my side seams, I'm going to take the middle value of each of these lines and connect them up to make my side seam. The handy thing um, on a pattern master, it goes from zero outwards and zero outwards. So I place it roughly in the middle and then make both the lines say the same number. So they're both saying 8.5. I'm going to do a little dot here. Same thing, you can look further back. They are both saying 7.7. .7. These guys. So I'm going to time lapse this bit. So I've got my side seam and I'm going to draw that in. I would be using a pencil normally, but again, I'm doing this in pen so that you can see it. Um, pencil's better because if you have to rub it out, you can. So we've got a nice seam here. So, when I've got my neckline, side neck point, and my side seams drawn, then I true the pieces to each other to make sure that they all fit together. So I'm going to repeat this on the back. I'm going to get my neckline um, and my side neck point and my shoulder, uh, my side seam, sorry, in uh, on the paper, and then I'm going to match them together and show you how to do that. You can see on this one, I bypassed a couple of them because it didn't make sense. Uh, they, they were out of whack with the other marks. And so um, it's fine to do that. You can bypass them to get a nice smoother curve. So we've got the side seam, the neckline and the shoulder point. So now we can match the front and back together. So I'm going to chop some of my paper away. Leaving enough for a seam allowance. Let's get rid of that. So, through uh, spot and cross paper, you should be able to see through onto the layer underneath. So, because I've used a nice thick pen, I should be able to see what I'm doing. To prove bits together, you can use a pen um, or an awl. If you wanted to get an awl, it looks like this. But I'm just going to use a biro because, you know, not everyone has the equipment. So I find the underarm point and I match them both together, line over line. And then the aim is to walk these two lines together, pivoting the paper until you get to the other end to see whether they match. So the lines are the same, I can see. And then here they start to do something different. So I put my pen here and I pivot the paper on the top until the lines match again. Here they start going off on a tangent again. So the lines now match to here. I'm going to move my paper slightly so that you can still see what I'm doing. So I'm going to move that and the lines start to change here. Move that. And you can see that my line underneath is actually here. 
but what you're looking for is a smooth blend between the pieces so you can see that actually it makes more sense for me to copy this line because that follows really nicely onto the um, onto the back so I'm going to do that I'm going to keep this line also a little tip if you can make your hem at the side seam a right angle everything will always fit that is a really lovely right angle I love 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 right angles they are it's really sad but I love them uh, right so then once you've got this line in tracing wheel through that so that it's transferred onto the paper underneath. So now I've got the information I need to make these two pieces fit each other. So the side seams happily fit perfectly, amazing. So I can now draw in my hem. So the hem, center front and center back should always be right angles. So I'm gonna do that first. A lot of pattern cutting is filling in what you know um, and then joining the dots. So centre front hem, unless it's a style and you want it to look like this or that, then you need to make sure it's a right angle. Because when you open the fold out, it will be a nice straight line. So that should be a right angle. It is amazing. So then we're just going to join those. So that is already a nice smooth curve. So I'm just going to keep it. Thank you, T-shirt, for doing something kind. So on this one, we've got our little dashed line from the tracing wheel. Done. So our hems are done, our side seams are done. Now for the shoulder. So here, the most important guy is the side neck. So we match those up and then match the shoulder. And you want to make sure firstly that your neckline makes a smooth curve and doesn't make, see this one here, that would have been a really weird shaped neckline. Mm -mm. We want a smooth curve, so we go round and that makes a really nice smooth curve. I'm happy with that. And then we go here and we've got one shoulder coming here and one shoulder coming here. So if they're different like that, there's a couple of things you can do. One of them is measure the garment and see what it measures. I'm not super bothered about that for this. I'm going to do the other technique, which is to see where each line has come from and then blend them together. So you can see like logically from that line and from that line, I want to go somewhere in between those two. And because it's only a small amount, I can totally do that and it's fine. And that matches quite nicely. I'm doing this super chunky. Normally it would be a really fine pencil line, but I want you to be able to see what I'm doing. So then I tracing wheel that information and it's transferred onto my t-shirt underneath. So I've got my two pieces, front and back. Just need to fill in the rest of the armhole. Cool, so center back, center front. We start with the front and because I've traced it the other way around I need to flip my paper but I can still see my pen line through the paper so with your biro we go from the underarm point and we're going to match the two curves because we've got a straight curve and a curlier curve we need to pivot a little more often so underarm matches and then from here we pivot round and here you can pivot either bit of paper depending on how much room you've got. So the lines start to go in different directions here. So I keep turning that round. This all matches beautifully. And then at the top, we've got a little bit of a pivot and then the shoulder matches absolutely perfectly. That almost never happens. I'm very happy about that. And then on the back, Do the same thing, so flip it. You could also do it like this, but I prefer to do it upside down because the curves generally match at certain points because that's how the garment will look. It's entirely up to you. So underarm matches and they start to move into different directions here. So pivot here, here, it all matches perfectly all the way around here, which is fab. 
and then you can see there my shoulder line for the back is here. This is normal because you have a little bit of ease. Jersey has less ease than woven. Ease just means at the top of the sleeve, because it goes up and over the arm, you want a little bit of extra to accommodate the shoulder ball. So, but Jersey doesn't really have it. So if you have a tiny bit, that's normal. So I'm gonna go in between there and that's my shoulder point. This is the grain line of the sleeve. Should be able to fold it in half at the grain line and this underarm seam should match. So they kind of do, which is fine. We can just make them fit. So through there, that's my seam. That's my underarm point. I'm gonna draw, I've done it on the back of the paper, so I'm just gonna draw the lines in again. So, I'm just going to do a normal seam on here so you can see how to do it. Pattern master, I'm going to do a 1.5 centimetre seam allowance all the way around. So I want my pattern master, the central line, to run along the folded edge of the paper. And I'm going to draw in from the third line down, half a centimetre, one, this is 1.5. I'm going to draw that until the lines don't agree anymore, just like we did with the pivot. Turn that round. Turn that round. You'll end up with something a little bit angular, but that's okay, you can smooth it out afterwards. At the hem, you want this to be a right angle, so I'm just gonna curve that round a little bit more. So we've got the third line in, and you can leave the pen on the paper and just pivot the pattern master. Now you're gonna cut that, and you can pin them together to make it easier. And then we draw the 1.5 here because regardless of what happens with the two curves, your underarm point will always match. So then I can trim that a little bit. Open this, open that. And then I'm gonna draw the seam allowance. So this bit here is a little bit different, that's okay. and then cut it out. There's your sleeve piece. Okay, so now you repeat on the front and the back. I've got the back here. I leave a bit of extra paper on my center um, just to protect this fold. So I'm gonna get rid of some, but keep like, I don't know, a couple of inches, six centimeters, five, six centimeters. And then I carefully fold along my center line. This performs a couple of functions. One of them is it protects this paper from like ripping or whatever. If you've cut it, you can imagine. Um, and the second one is it makes an absolutely straight line. Um, and then I go about and add my seam allowance in exactly the same way. So, starting with the right angles at the centre, we've got a right angle at the side seam hem. And I repeat that right angle here, following this line, following that line, I know that that's a right angle. Usually the underarm point is a right angle, but not always. Because my sleeves match really well, I'm not going to stress too much about that. And kind of colouring in whilst I turn the pattern master. Do whatever works for you at this bit. Like if you want to mark it in tiny marks and then cut it out, that's fine. And then right angle at the shoulder. Standard, not enough pattern paper here. I'm going to add a cheeky little bit magic tape. Another 1.5. And 
And then here, I'm just going to do a centimetre because um, you don't need it around the neckline. And the more seam allowance you have, the narrower the hole for the neck. So I'm just going to do a centimetre there. And I'm still going to make sure I've got a seam allowance, uh, sorry, a right angle here. And then cut it out. And now repeat for the front. So I'm going to time lapse this because you know what to do. When you come to the front neck, the inside bit towards the centre front is going to be a lot shallower. You still need to make sure it's a right angle. So even for like a centimetre or so, do that and then finish the curve. So there we have it. We've got our centre front, centre back and our sleeve patterns ready to cut out. Um, next what you can do is notch them. So on the back, walk the pieces together again and do a double notch for the back armhole. One notch at the shoulder, which will match with this point. And then for the front, walk them together I'm doing my lazy thing and using my finger, but you can use a pen. Single for the front, and that is done. Your t-shirt is ready to make. My patterns are generally not the most beautiful things in the world because they're works in progress, but they fit, and that's the most important thing. So that's it. You just copied your favorite t-shirt. Now you've got the fit right, why not go and experiment with different lengths? You could change the sleeve length, change the neckline, um, whatever you feel like you wanna have a play around with. The fit's the most important thing on the t-shirt, so now you've got that down, that is nearly all the battle. Um, if you found this video useful, please hit the like button. I would really appreciate the love. Um, and leave comments and suggestions for videos that you'd like to see in the future. Thank you so much for watching. Take care, stay safe, and I'll see you next time. Bye.